Yo, dude. I'm not. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sounding good. <laughs> oh, man. I have a question for you. Okay. I'm, I, I have two questions for you. Two? Oh, man. Okay. One. Go for it. Have you been able to use the uh, Grip Clean at yes. all? I've been using it. You have? It works good. You like it? Yeah, I do. Cool. Yeah, so thanks for sending that to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it it does a good job, and it doesn't dry out your hands right. like crazy. Right. And um, we're hitting fall. It's November yep. 23rd right now. Dude, my my hands get really dry. Yeah. And um I'm not finding myself to like lotion up my hands yeah. like crazy, you know, mm -hmm. like after a cleaner. Like right. I normally do. So that that stuff's good. Yeah. That's cool, man. They also sell some hand wipes, which are pretty cool. It's like the Clorox wipes yeah. that you put from the tub. And I use them to like wipe down my um all my tools. Okay. Which, which really, or, or like if you don't have water in your garage and right. you're using the hand wipes, you can just like pull one out, boom, toss it, and they're awesome. So if you guys are interested in finding out this about this product, um, I mean, sent some to Matt. I've been using it for a while, and I really love it. I actually kind of transferred the whole shop into using this. We, from, from Orange Clean into Grip Clean is what we've transitioned into and I actually get 10% off and I want to share that link with you guys, whoever's watching. Um, I think the link, if you go into like how they, however they put in their codes, Moto MD, I'll put it in the description below and you guys can access that as well. But they're a really nice. cool company and I like them and it sounds like Matt likes them too. Yeah. So. Um, those wipes, do they have uh, like a little pumice in it? Like no, it's just like it literally reminds you of Clorox wipes from the little tubes. Okay. You pop the cap, they smell really good. You wipe them, there's no pumice in them. You can toss them and dry them, or I mean, toss them and your hands dry. They don't feel like very pumicey or anything like that. So I've been using this stuff. Ever use this? Okay. No, I've never um, used that. So th these work good, and it seems like they have a little bit of pumice in the. Um, and the stuff, uh, let me just, so it looks like this, right? Okay. Um, and there's definitely some scrubbing action in there. Um, they're a little, they're a little harsh, I think. Okay. Um, I, I would love to try the grip clean. Yeah. Towelets. Yeah. Um, I'll see if they can't send us any and then we'll try them out. Do you ever hear of some stuff called nutty white? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, no. that's what it's called. And this this is the stuff that we had in our high school uh, auto shop. And it was, it was white. It was crushed walnut shells. Okay. Okay. And it, it was like, uh, dude, nutty white. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> what a name. Uh, but it was like, an eco-friendly cleaner as well. Yeah. I think. But yeah. Anyway, what's cool with the 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 grip clean people? They say the dirt that clean like it's like the one dirt that cleans with dirt or something like. So like yeah. apparently like they're using like organic stuff to make your hands clean. It's no, pretty cool. I, I definitely like it. And yeah, um, good, 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 good. Yeah. Question two. Okay. The world wants to know. You you have a big family. Actually, I I want to know. Uh, who cares about whoever's watching this? You you have a big family, right? Yeah. So I feel like every family has at least three meals that that are their go-to weekly meals. What are okay. yours? Well, we do uh, taco night or fajita night. Killer. Some yep. kind of Mexican food, like usually Tuesday, Taco Tuesday or whatever. Yep. But actually, we did it. We did it today. We did uh, rice bowls. Mm. With some grilled chicken, with obviously some uh, corn beans. Well, refried beans. Okay, uh, yeah. All the fixins. Um, so we definitely do tacos. Yep. It's a must. Some some yeah. form of tacos once a night. I mean, once a week. Shit. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then um, we do a lot of pizza, especially okay. in Chica- yeah. Chicago, uh, at least once a week. Uh, usually, you like order out or uh, frozen or sometimes frozen. Sometimes I make my own dough, mm. roll it out. I got a pizza stone for my grill, and I got oh, cool. a, I got one of those. Uh, you know the, what? Do you, what do you call those things? Brick oven? Uh, no, the like the big, the big uh, pizza handler. Like yeah, it's what like the, the what, what's that thing called? I don't know. But the big spatula. Yeah. Okay. Pizza spatula. I, I, I got that. Um, it, it's you know what? It's hard to make a pizza like a killer mm-hmm. pizza with a yeah nice crust. Oh yeah. On the bottom and then like know not burning it or anything and right it's, it's it's three ingredients but it's hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so it's hard in the grill yeah because like dude like i have a large family we can devour right. 50 bucks worth of pizza like oh that. i'm sure i'm sure so i'm like dude it's three ingredients how how right. hard can it be right so i tr- i've always tried to make my own um but it's not the same you know right so so pizza nights, you have taco nights, which is which is a given. Me and Jackie are the exact same way. Yeah. We like um, uh, for frozen pizza. I don't, I'm I'm not making no pizza, dude. Yeah. When we have for a frozen pizza, we'll hit up. Um, uh, I think Paul Paul Newman. Who's the guy who does the salad dressing? That's Newman. Newman's, Newman's own. Newman's, Newman's own. Familiar. I, Newman Zone has a pizza, and it's kind yeah. of pricey, but a hundred percent supposedly, a hundred percent proceeds go to charity, but pretty killer uh, frozen pizza. Hundred percent. A hundred percent is what it says in the box. Wow. So I don't know what that means, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's like I think hundred. Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I mean, was the guy making any money or what? <laughs> right. I don't know. But yeah, frozen pizza to taco night. One more thing. What else you got? Big family. Uh, you got to be feeding well, them all. My, my wife does a 99.9% of the, the cooking. Lucky you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do most of the cooking in, my, in our house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I used to do all the cooking when we were uh, no kids. Okay. When we were living in California and, and she was working nights and all this. I, w- I was doing all the dinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's totally changes. flip-flopped. Right, right, right. <laughs> but whatever. Um she makes a lot of soups. Okay. All kinds. Interesting. Uh, so soup is soup is good, man. I would say ours is chili. We okay. We like chilies. Yeah. We'll have like a go to chili. And like we we do this thing with chili where we only eat it with the Tostitos lime chips, hint of okay. lime chips. So no spoons, no nothing. You just eat the entire bowl. Oh yes. nice. Oh, dude. Those are good chips, things. man. They are the best. Yeah. So, yeah. cool. The world now knows what Matt eats three at least three times a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, do you want to fire us up? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Broken Moto Show. This is where Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com and Cody from MotorcycleMD, we answer tech questions that are submitted by you yep and we just try to go over solutions so we can help you guys out yeah so cody what's the email where they send that info to that email is askbrokenmoto at gmail.com and that's where you can send us uh videos pictures uh good quality information about your bike is what's needed um, we try to put the year making model maybe into this in the subject of the email and then the rest of it uh, just spew out um, whatever you have about your bike in the in the description and we'll try to get through it all um, pictures are great I mean it, we, even when, even if it's spark plugs if your tire is wearing on the left hand side send us a picture you know send us pictures of whatever you got going on it helps us out videos are great if you can send a video talk through it you know we want to hear about it you're making miles. Um, that really helps us out kind of dial in on what problem you're having. All right. You want to do the first one? Let's do it. All right. Question, uh, episode 16, question number one, Mason. 
I have a problem with my bike. It's a 2003 Honda Shadow Spirit 750. It was parked for 10 years in a garage. I got it off a brother and he started and started to fix it. I cleaned the carb and replaced the float bowl pin. All new gaskets. I only cleaned the jets and any other gas or air passageway. I did this, I did this about three times because every time I ran it, the front cylinder takes a long time to heat up and it backfires a little. And then it smokes white from the front position after the bike has ran and heated up. The only mod is the baffles that are cut out of the exhaust. I already tried adjusting the auto screws, but I can't tell if it's too rich or too lean because when I remove the front cylinder spark plugs, they are black, wet with gas. The back cylinder spark plugs are just fine. The front cylinder spark plugs have been replaced not once, not twice, Matt, but eight different times. <laughs> and I think he included pictures with this one. He I just did. forgot to uh, jot he that did. down here in the notes, but yeah. No, he did. Um, yeah, so based off the pictures, he has a dirty carb. I'm not sure. If, I'm hoping this was before cleaning and not after because they were a mess. Yeah, they were. I think that was before. It had to be before. Yeah, cause yeah I, I, I really hope so. Yeah. Yeah, well, Mason, you should have mentioned in the you, – you were taking the video like, hey, this is what it looked like before. Right. Yeah. Say something. Yeah. You know? Because now we're guessing – now we're guessing. Uh, I mean, obviously, if they're that dirty, no freaking way is right. it going to run. Right. Um, um, I, I, I hope he was able to source, for any of you 1,100 twin guys out there, Motorcycle ND has a fantastic carb teardown on that bike. I mean, full on, fully, Matt, all the way through it, in and out cleaning it so maybe he used it maybe he didn't regardless he has a rich issue on the front cylinder so one thing that i have noticed about the 1100s depending on the year honda would switch which cylinder got the biggest main jet okay they'd put like ideally they want the biggest main jet in the rear cylinder reason being excuse me they have a cylinder that's tucked behind the front right? So you have tw a meat twin. This rear cylinder is getting a lot hotter than the front cylinder because of just air cooling and what's going on. Right. So Honda would actually take the rear cylinder's carburetor and they'd put a bigger main jet, not much, two, maybe three, what we're calling maybe 5%, I would say bigger um, of the main jet. Um, but it's, it is a difference. And because that fuel actually, believe it or not, helps cool the cylinder down just a hair to actually have it function function with the front cylinder and ha how cool that cylinder stays as well. I don't think that that may be his, like, that is the silver bullet, but it's something to pay attention to. If he, I'm not sure how he cleaned the carb or how he got rid of all that muck that you saw, because that's not just what he saw there, guys, is just is not just what he, what's exterior of the carb. It's all throughout the body. Yeah, it's very vital to get that stuff cleaned out right. Body, the body needs to be soaked. Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, he's having issues with it, just like idling. So it's it's probably not the main jet, like you mentioned, but that's something to note for yeah. sure. I mean, one thing I also saw is he was he was taking the float in the video and he was pulling on it, right? Because the float needle was stuck i don't know if you saw that but he was trying to function the float because the float needle was stuck okay just him pulling on that float changes the float height because it's attached by that little dinghy the little exactly thing yeah okay it's it's got a metal tang on it yeah so the moment that you you raise and you're you're even showing us that in the video i'm like i hope he checked the float height and because that's not what he said in the video I mean, or in the description. Yeah, I didn't get that far in that video because I, I, I thought I saw en enough in the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it was pretty much I, the same. Um, so float height need, needs yeah. to be checked. Are those cause all... Because it is adjustable. Okay, so it has a metal tang? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. I was going to say, 
is it plastic, 100% plastic? Like, it's all no, plastic, no. but the, the tang. Pl- yep, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, I got a carb clean video on this one as well. Um, okay, cool. But you know what? You know what I did with this one when I put it back together is I hooked up the P PCV PVC valve hose. P, uh-huh. How do you say it? PVC or PCV? PVC. PCV. That's PVC. Pair check valve. Positive crankcase valve. PCV. I always PCV. get P. I always get PVC and PCV. (laughs) Anyway, I hooked that tube, that hose up to the carb vent on accident. Okay. So what happened is the floats, the, the, the carb was getting pressurized. Oh, interesting. Causing a rich condition. Yeah. Mainly at idle. Or okay. D cell. So like, dude, I Did had do this, that on both cylinders or just one? Uh, so I think I just had <clears throat> that hooked up to one carb. Interesting. I, okay. I don't remember, but I, I'm mentioning this because, sh- hey man, we all make mistakes. And yeah, it happens. Absolutely. Dude, I was riding this thing and on D cell, it started coming apparent because, um, I don't know why, but anyway, one of yeah. the cylinders, all of a sudden, started getting rich just like that. I'm like, what's right. going on? And then um, I, I don't know how I diagnosed it. I finally just started tearing stuff off. Right. And I remember it running and it was rich and I pulled that hose and then it cleared up and I was like, <laughs> Dude, it was, it's like, it's like they were right. <laughs> they were, you know, it's supposed to go to the air cleaner. Right. Or whatever. And I, it, it's, or like the sub filter or yeah, something like that. Or the backing plate of the air box. So I totally understood. I told I, I, I totally understand how you can get that wrong. I'm glad I found it though. I mean Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, the the but the but the front cylinder being rich, let's wrap this one up. I think that he should check the main jet sizes, make sure he's got the right one in the right port. Okay. And then he should double check the way that his C V is positioned the rubber diaphragm inside of the carb, double check that, make sure that that's right. Make sure the CV is not locked down or uh, doing something wonky. Make sure that this main jet is tight because we all know that Cody even makes mistakes with main jets and they can fall out and make sure that the needle valve for the CV piston is in there tight. Cause if it's not in there tight and then the, the little lock that's in there, the jet can just do whatever it wants, make it super rich. Um, there's no valve adjustment he should do. I don't think there's a, I don't think that's a valve thing. I think it's a carb thing. Yeah. I think the last thing that he messed with was the carburetors. Let's go after the carburetors. Um, and Matt, you have a video on that. And I as well have a video on that as well. So pick your poison. Yeah. Buy them both. Yeah. Buy them both. Dude. <laughs> no. Matt, we need to talk about these guys that donated into the beer fund. What is the beer fund that we got? So we have a beer fund, and that is just simply to support the show. It is. It buys us beers. If we have this stuff, we can talk for an hour about yep. your repairs. Simple. We'll laugh and then make fools of ourselves um, as we talk yeah. about motorcycle repair. That's right. So let's acknowledge Justo. Dusto, every Jeff, there, there every time. Jeff and Matthew. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. We appreciate you guys seeing the value in the show. Hope you guys who are not donating see the value as well. Tonight I am drinking again from Stone IPA. Um, I didn't mention this because this is a new video. This is going to be after Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys are nice and fat and happy from Thanksgiving, by the way. (laughs) But um, this is from Stone IPA. Matt is drinking what I would think would be the Matt special, which is the watermelon kombucha with some Tito's vodka with a little hint of lime and a finger to mix it. Keynote, finger must mix the drink. (laughs) 
This is in a kitchen. <laughs> or, or a 10 millimeter wrench. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I start my coffee in the morning. Sugar and 10 yeah. millimeter wrench. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I have a stone IPA. This is called the delicious IPA. It was really cool because I, I liked the, the, the marketing that they did. They said that we made a huge mistake and they said that pretty much the mistake was them making a delicious IPA, which makes you want to buy it. But in reality, they printed everything upside down, which is kind of cool. It's just very smart and clever to me. Um, I appreciate good branding. So again, beer fun. Thank you guys so much. Jeff, Justo, Matthew, you guys in the peace. Link will be in the video description below if you want yes, to help it will. us out. Thank you. Yes, it will. All right, on to question two. Matt, this one's on you. All right, this one is from Barney, 1980 CB750. I ordered 025 pistons. So I don't know if that's millimeters or inches, but it doesn't matter. Last no. episode, we were. It's over. It's overstock. It's bigger. It's like one, it's one step overstock. To rebuild the bike above. Neither the Honda service manual nor the Honda common service manual advise to what piston to cylinder wall clearance should be. They just say service limit is four thousands. What should I be asking the machine shop to give me for clearance? Thank you, Barney. Okay, so um, that that really should come from the piston manufacturer. Because if they're forged or cast or hyper Putic or whatever, they're going to have a different expansion rate, and the mm. the manufacturer of the piston should specify that, and then that should be given to your machine shop. Um, that's all I can say about that. I think. Okay. What I will what I will add if let's say you're buying it from Honda, right? So this is not from Wiseco. This is not from aftermarket. This is from Honda. And they offer a 0.250 or a 0.25 and a, or a 50 over. So what would we call it? 0.05 over. So this can be confusing, Barney. And I understand your your reason being pretty much what they're saying is that 0.00 or 4 thousandths is the limit. So if you take a 4 thousandths feeler gauge, they're saying that like that is as far as you can go. Anything above this will run. They're saying that 0.004 is the cylinder wall clearance. That's saying the clearance between the piston and the cylinder wall. So you measure the piston and you measure what standard piston bore would be. Then you subtract the two and then that, that would give you that number. And then they, in the manual, there should be a number for standard size piston or whatever your piston is to standard size overbore or I'm sorry, standard size cylinder versus a stock bore. So the stock bore has to be bored out for the oversized piston. What I'm saying is that if you have a stock piston and they have stock cylinder wall, they'll give you two clearances and that clearance number that they're giving you is the same one you should apply to the new one. Sure. If it's the same piston, uh, type in may uh, if it's material. a stock honda yeah if yeah. it's stock honda oversized piston you literally just take what the stock specs are and then you would apply them to the new ones if you're using the honda parts matt's saying if you're using aftermarket parts it may be different i'm a, i'm applying it to you i'm assuming you bought an 025 piston that's a stock honda oversized piston yeah so are there um honda pistons for this model available oversized oversized i wouldn't doubt it okay. they sell oversized pistons all day long yeah and i know there's a ton on ebay as well yeah you know there's a lot of right it wouldn't surprise me i've i they have three over so like 0 0.025 0 0.50 and 0 0.075 for 900 f's from honda so yeah. it, it wouldn't surprise me that they had a, a, a Honda made an oversized piston for it. Yeah. Um, what I did with my CB750 rebuild is I used um, Cycle Exchange. Uh huh. I sent them my stuff. I bought Great the, company. Great company. Yeah, they are. I, I bought the pistons from them. I sent them my cylinder. 
and they just set them up. Yeah. There's no question because it's their pistons. They know what to do. They're they're known. Yeah. For good work, and it was it was no question. You know I did a um a a, a eight nineteen kit from them. Okay. For a seven fifty or a seventy six. Interesting. They have a lot of good stuff. They have a lot yeah, of yeah. They stuff. have a ton of nice stuff. Nice yeah. expensive stuff. <laughs> I didn't want to buy, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't my money. That's the cool thing about working. Yeah. Out. And you're spending other people's money on cool yeah. stuff. Well, that was my <laughs> like my money, so I'm like, ah, <laughs> just go so you went all stock. You went you went all all it, stocks. Yeah, except for an MLS head gasket, because okay, why not? Right? Why not? Um, why not? Yeah, I'm stuck. Cool. Is that fly still bothering you? Dude, there are more bugs in here, Matt, than I've ever seen in my life. And honestly, I haven't been out here too much. We're working on the house yeah. inside. Um, I haven't been out here too much because I'm super excited. Wednesday, I have a lift coming. Mm. Tomorrow I have my uh, air compressor coming. Man. So motorcycle MD garage has been getting two big upgrades. So you've been, just... you've been spending a lot of money like myself, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> just dumping it. Dumping it. Dude, all um, the cool stuff is so much money. It's so ex if you want nice stuff, man. If you want nice stuff, you know, I'm not gonna spend four hundred fifty dollars on a motorcycle lift from Harbor Freight. Yeah, I'm gonna get a handy lift because that's what you need to have if you want to do good stuff, you know. So, I found a guy over in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, three hours away. I have a buddy out in Raleigh, North Carolina, and um, I said, "Yo, if I buy this lift from this guy, would you pick it up for me?" He said, "Absolutely." So, um, he picked up a bike. I actually rebuilt his uh, Honda eighty something uh, CB four hundred twin automatic. So it's the automatic, the Honda Matic 400. Okay. I, I rebuilt the motor on his, on his bike for him. So he's, he's a really good friend of mine. He picked it up for me, man. He picked the lift up for me. And he's bringing it on Wednesday. And nice. I'm going to have a freaking lift and a freaking air compressor. <laughs> That's man. awesome, man. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so Dude. excited to make, to make videos in here with a lift, you know. I had a handy 1000. That thing was bulletproof. Yeah. All the parts are available. It's easy to work on. Um, yep. So it's just, what I use every day. it's a standard one. No, no dropout panel, nothing. It's just, it's got an extension on it and that's it. Extension for the quad, like what width? So, yeah. Um, uh, length. So oh. it's got an extension for the length. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, what, what, what I like about it, cause that, that's what I use every day. And the shop. So what's cool about the extension is like you can do carbs. Like you pull the carbs off, and then you have like, like almost almost like twenty inches, yeah, of space to like work on. You can just do the carbs right there. Gotcha. In front or in the back? In back, the back, right? Back. In the back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm oh, excited, awesome. man. I'm excited. Oh, I, got, I I have to learn how to hook it all up. You know, do the air and run it and wires and. So I'm excited, man. I'm just really excited about it. Oh yeah. It's like the, it was like the, the the two last big things for the shop. So, sure, no, that's awesome. Cool, dude. So, episode uh, question three. Is this me? I think it's you, man. Okay. Go for it. Hey guys, thank you so much for the videos. I definitely owe a lot to you both. I'm going to figure out a way to send you some local beers for you to try. He had to split them up evenly, you know, evenly <laughs> being from two different areas. Dude, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> sending beer by mail or UPS is not cheap. <laughs> is it not cheap? <laughs> no, um, I mean, uh, you know, nothing, no, shipping's nothing's cheap, but I, I've been wanting to send you some stuff too, man. I was wondering about how much you spent about with what you sent me. Did I try to send something out to Australia the other day? You know, how much did one to charge me to send out a wire harness? To uh, probably 150 bucks bingo so i was in the ups bingo. store returning some amazon stuff that i didn't like or whatever uh -huh. <laughs> um the, the guy in front of me wanted to be 
to send something to Australia. And he's like, yeah, it's like 250, 300. And then I'm, <gasps> couple, I'm like, is it that much? He's like, yeah, man. Dude. So it's not cheap. You know, it's crazy. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the guy who donated to us three episodes ago, he's a member of mine. Uh, Try to send him. I've been, dude, I've been wanting to send him a shirt for the longest time. I mean, he, he lives in Denmark. I've tried three times. It's been wrong. It's, they've sent it back to me three times. So you oh, now we're man. talking about almost $100, $150 in, in shipping to this guy. So I was like, you know what? This is going to be it. I'll make a big box. It's going to get there right. I've contacted him 100 times. We, me and him have gone back and forth about how it should look, what it should look like, how it should be spelt. Three different shirts, you know, send it back to me. They sent it right back to me because it was Come wrong. On because of one small thing. So I try to send it back to them again, a hundred and like 60 bucks to send it back. I mean, there's no way, man. There's no way. I spent almost so, $300 to send you crap. So what was wrong? Like the address or the information? Yeah. On, like on the, the way that, the way that, that, that they were writing it, and they kept like adding something like, like they, like they add like, apartment 32 and it's like no he like you can't put apartment 32 it has to be 32 24 henmark or something like that and you're like okay well so it was like the shipper's issue it was my issue this is crazy right now it's crazy for shipping yeah overseas at least anyways that's what i was saying anyway i restored one of three one of these about three years ago but it was a garage queen with only 8,600 miles requiring basic maintenance and replacements. I have just acquired a 1986 VF 500 F interceptor with 30,000 miles. It is all there in a runner. as I drove it home 22 miles without problems. Again, this needs basic maintenance work and replacements. Good luck on replacements there, brother. I am betting that the valves have never been adjusted per the schedule, and I will do this myself. The bike seemed to not have any ticking or smoke at all, just looking to preserve the internal t- integrity as long as I can as long as I can parts are hard to come by as long as parts aren't hard to come by, I guess we said. There is one video filmed this year on YouTube showing this, and I have the OEM service manual, which is good. I have used the technique in the video. I was considering not pulling the side covers and just observing the cams as I spin the rear wheel while it is in sixth gear. I will be able to directly view when the cam lobes are not pushing on the rockers. Then I can measure the, the and then I can measure and adjust with my tappet tools and feelers. Does this seem like a solid technique, avoiding having to replace gaskets that I'm that are not leaking? Is there anything else I should be aware of or adjusting while I'm in there? I have OEM valve cover gaskets. Any advice is appreciated. The bike has a Canon air filter. Ooh. It has Kirker dual slip-ons. I am jetting up one size all around good 95 to 98 mains 40 pilot and a single number four washer thanks cody thanks to you guys paul jenkins i will say that this bike is a nightmare to work on matt the vf 500f interceptor is a nightmare to work on mark my words so paul jenkins have fun dude on to the next question. Okay. Question number four. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it really is, is a, because it's different. Like they did it for like one or two years. Okay. So any other 500F or interceptor that they did, n- completely different. Just even the bowl gaskets, Matt, are different. Like okay. the Honda dicked around and was like, oh, let's just put a little L right in this like bowl gasket. So it's only available for the 85. And then the 86, <laughs> scratch all that. Let's do something different with, with the bowl gaskets. So working on this bike is very difficult because it's not 
mass populated. It was like this year, this year, boom, we're done. It didn't work very well. Is this a V4? V4. Does it Force have – so it has um, – so it ha obviously the carbs are nested in between the cylinders. Yep. Does it have a metal uh, plate or air box? Like part of the air box is like what keeps the carbs together. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, there's, there's an air box like bucket that yeah. connects all four. Um, does this model have, uh, sorry, I'm totally off tangent here. Does no, it, man. you know how the carbs have the fuel joints? Yep. Are, oh, they, yeah. pla are they plastic? No, they're metal. Okay. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Some of the models have plastic uh -huh. ones, dude. <sighs> you ever crack one of those? Oh yeah, dude. I just broke one the other day on a Magna. Well, <sighs> I was working on some V4 model. This was back in 99. I'm 18. I'm at a, okay. I'm working for a dealer. He's like, service manager's like, Hey man, work on this bike. Uh, it was just worked on by another mechanic, but it came back. He's like, work on this. And I took that plate off, uh -huh. which maintains the alignment of all the four carbs. Yeah. So I yeah. took that plate off and then I pried each carb off individually and crack <laughs> one of those stupid fuel joints. Yeah, you you can't buy them by, by not, themselves. Not available. No, it's so not that available. Bike sat there forever, and the service manager was like, "Dude, this was before like eBay, okay? Yeah, <laughs> this was before a lot of yeah. stuff, and like, man." That's brutal. Like, it's brutal. I mean, and, it, and it's all one off, man. It's it's all one off on those interceptors. And it's it's a pain in the butt, man. Those guys, he I'll show you guys some pictures of his because he did send us some. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, like it's like it looks or uh, I would be I would be I'd I it'd be awesome to live in that in that era and see that bike come out from Honda. You know, it looks cool. It, it is a nice bike, yeah. It for is. Sure. When they were, when they were brand new, red, the red, white, and blue, you know, hanging off that bike, it was just really cool, and they were really smooth operating bikes. But as soon as two years later, and you realize, oh shit, they're not going to make this bike anymore. That's when it goes downhill. We just worked on one. We had it. We Matt, we had it at the shop for 10, 10 11 months easily. Trying to solve it, I was I was helping a newer a, a newer guy who was working on it, trying to find parts for it, trying to do this, trying to do that, order off eBay, order off you know do all this stuff. The main thing we came came in, came down to is once the someone had dicked up the carbs, right? They like took apart even the sink linkages, okay, which you never do. You never want to do that. They, they took all the throttle plates off. They did all the things. He's trying to put them all back together again. And I don't know what springs go where and something's broken and this, that, and the other. Um, <laughs> one thing I will add <coughs> to this is that he needs to make sure that the air box assembly is all assembled correctly. Because if you take, like, they had an air box, then they had a reducer snorkel. to the air box. Yep, snorkel. And it has, like, a little, like, dongle. <laughs> kind of hung down. Okay. If that's not there, it will run like crap. It yeah. will run like crap. And we we talked about that in previous episodes. Yeah. We, yeah. We we, we we have. Yeah. Um. So so we'll we'll, we'll go full circle because I think I feel like all of my viewers, all of the people who know me, um, know that I do not like '80s bikes. <laughs> like I do not like them. It was it flopped. Everyone flopped until the '90s. It's because you were born in the 90s, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe. Dude, the 90s was a great decade. <laughs> but so to, to oh, answer this guy's inspection question, it sounds, yeah. like, it sounds like he's smart enough to know what's going on. It sounds like he has a factory service manual. It sounds like he's saying that if he can time the cam in the correct position, this is all going to be good. I agree with what he's saying. I agree with that. If the lobe is facing up, 
the clearance underneath should be read correctly. You have uh, two timing chains that are in the center in the center of each camshaft. Whether it's he's got four camshafts going on, so that all the all the tension is going to be on the center of the camshaft, so he can check cam lash with the lobes facing up. I don't care what degree they're in. He has a factory manual. Follow the manual, and it's going to lead you home. So uh, they are all adjustable. And what I look like in, in the parts fish, they're all tappet style. You can adjust them. Crappy design on that model, to be honest with you, in my opinion. But adjust them, get them all back in spec. Yeah, I mean, this. it, it sounds like he has a good plan. Yeah, he does. He has new gaskets. Sounds like he knows the terminology for everything. Yep. So I think he'll be successful. Yeah, I agree. Paul Jenkins, you are, more, you are smarter than you think you are. So, I mean, there's there's really no question here. We just kind of... Right. It was like, yeah. what do you guys think? And I yeah. agree. Go for it, man. Yeah, you know? go for it. Yeah. Question four. All right. This one is from John. <coughs> Dude, you sound terrible. It's getting better, though. All right. I think this is going to be a quick one, dude. Mm -hmm. Could you... <laughs> Help me, please, as I have a Suzuki RF600R 1993. The solid went, and I put a new one on, and now she will not fire as she's trying to thought. Thank you. If you could help me from John from England. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think, <laughs> how about you? I think <laughs> I think he said solenoid. <laughs> I think he meant to say oh, solenoid. Okay. And the solenoid went. I put a new one on. Oh, all right. Okay. And well, she that... will not fire, as she as she is trying to thought. <laughs> okay. Well, that that makes a little more sense, I guess. Solenoid. All right. All right so solenoid. All right, so reread it with solenoid in place. Okay, can you help me, please? I put a new solenoid on, and it won't fire. Okay, so how solenoid works is it, it's it's a relay, right? Yeah. It's twelve volts. From, Heavy duty relay. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's basically just a shortcut for the electrical path in the starting system. So you're trying to get twelve volts from uh, your start. Your start button, which in, in, engages this solenoid. Yeah. And then it goes from the starter, I'm sorry, the battery to the starter. So direct okay, connection. Yep. So you can have high current, short distance, start to move. So um, I guess then my first question is are you even getting a click? If mm -hmm. you're getting a click, then that thing should be closing the circuit path from the battery to the starter. Right? Yep. Um, I think you should stop there. Put a screwdriver across the terminals. Yeah. Bam. I think you should okay. stop there because we don't know too much about this. Like, we could speculate about, about this bike's issue all day. Yeah, all night long. yeah I guess you can. Because it's sure. not starting. The solar has been replaced. Who knows, dude? Who yeah. knows? Hit a starter fluid, jump the solenoid, see what happens. Send it. Yeah, I mean, dude, you can take the cable, bypass the solenoid, take cable yeah. from the, the, the battery to the starter post, the voltage, the current will flow, and the, it'll crank it over. It's like bench, test, bench testing the starter, but on your bike. But you guys got to realize that the battery positive terminal, the battery positive cable goes straight to the solenoid. That that's right. that's yeah. that that's where it ends. It goes straight to the solenoid. Then you have a wire that goes from the solenoid to the starter. The only thing that's in between those two things that's disconnecting. A lot of amperage and a, and a ground together is just that switch. That's all it is. So you have a starter button. You click the starter button, and it has a winding inside that magnetizes, 
sends the switch to the top, connects the two, positive to negative, boom, instant power to the starter. Because you That's can't, all it is. You can't send 50 amps through your start button. Right. Right. And the starter button's only purpose is just to connect something else together. Because your wires would be that big to the <laughs> right, to <your> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway. All right. So, John, sorry we couldn't help you more, but your email sucked. <laughs> Question number I, five. I, I think he was talking to his phone for sure. He's like, <laughs> oh, for sure. Nah, nah, nah. He's Send. like, he's like working on his bike right then and there, emailing us. All right, so well, question five. The, yeah, I messed up there. But the, this next one's not any better, so go for it. <clears throat> okay. Is this is this the old guy? Is this the guy from before? I don't think so, but okay. it's another... Chinese 2019 50cc GY6 scooter. It's a Tao Tao. New speed 50. I ride it a lot, all over even on long, long trips out of town. I average, not including around town, about a 1,000 miles a month. The scooter works great and is very reliable, except for one thing. It will blow, the rec it will blow a rectifier about every four months. I am, luckily, I, I am lucky it's an AC ignition system. I am lucky it is an AC ignition system because it will run without the battery. Annoyingly, the rectifier always seems to blow when I'm about 100 miles away from the home. Good thing is the headlight runs off of just the stator. So the headlight is not acting as a, its own regulator for the battery. What on earth could be causing this rectifier to be blown on a regular basis? Like that, also, I was thinking of adapting a rectifier from a regular motorcycle because it would be more heavier duty, I hope, and less likely to blow. The theory seems sound. The wiring will be easy to figure out. However, I may be better to figure out why the stock rectifier keeps blowing. What do you think? I don't think it's worth your time to figure out why the rectifier is still blowing. Well, um... I don't think it's worth your time, Joe. Uh, P.S. Hint. When tr I, I don't understand why he even inputted this into the email, Matt. But he said, P.S. Hint. When trying to kickstart the scooter, put it up on the center stand first. If you don't, the center stand being up, the kickstarter will only have about one-third of its travel. Because the kickstand will hit the center stand, so you will have to put that on the center stand for the Kickstarter to move fully. I don't, I, I, I don't know why it's there. Well, because his battery, his battery's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, on the left side, you have the the the, the thing to put on the center stand, and right. the kicks the Kickstarter's on the left side. I think. Right. So I, like that that's not information that's useful to me. I don't know. Well, if you if you had that <laughs> battery in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you had to get this thing over. It. <laughs> so your right to fire is junk. Um, as to why that's happening, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's worth wiring an an, an actual motorcycle right to fire. I do think that's totally worth it. And what we're, what we're talking about, guys, is, yeah, rectifier. Well, the, the rectifier's job, and it's probably a twin. It's probably both. It's a one-unit thing. Yeah, right? reg, regular rectifier. So you have a regulator. The regulator, it's very simple. Regulator, make sure that the battery's not being overcharged. The rectifier, the batteries on all your motorcycles, your scooters can only take DC voltage. That's, that's the only way that they can store their power. The rectifier transfers that AC voltage, which is being generated by motion, into a DC current, which is more direct, and the battery can actually store that. The battery can't store AC voltage. So the rectifier is in place for that, to be, for that switch to take place and the battery to, to, to take it in. So what he's talking about is a device 
that can do both at the same time, all in, all, all in one unit. It's a regulator, yeah. rectifier unit, and Which his is, really is junk. Yeah, yeah, his is really junk. So he needs to put a different one on and try it because I don't know the answer to this question. I don't know why that's happening. Yeah, I mean, we talked in detail. Yeah, we did. We did. We've, we've already done this, Matt. We've already done this. Your stator can't p- output more. You know, it's not. It's not like like a problem can ensue, and all of a sudden you have a stator that's like throwing out tons of AC voltage. It's not going to put out ninety, then all of a sudden two days later it puts out two thirty. Like that doesn't happen. Maybe try putting it in a position that gets more air cooling properties. You know, that may be interesting to see. Put it on the outside of the uh, of of the bodywork because all those tau tau scooters are all inside the bucket. They're all inside that seat bucket, you know? Yeah, or or maybe just buy like a case of them mm-hmm. and put them They're probably like nine bucks. <laughs> put put them in the luggage rack mm-hmm. and just have the tools to swap them. Dude, like, oh, I blew another one. I'm just gonna swap it in <laughs> on the side of the road and I'm gonna keep going. That sounds fun. Yeah, because I mean I don't know, man. Like with the big four <clears throat> jet bikes, I'm not replacing these. Like, yeah. No, you're not. It's I not see, common. It's not. I mean, it's not a normal thing. I mean, dude, we had two <clears throat> guys already email us about this brand. Right. This problem. Exactly. In just a few months. Exactly. Um, I I don't see us. You don't see these emails coming in from the big four. Exactly. And I don't experience those problems this often with those as well so i mean my advice is to put a motorcycle one on there a no name brand i mean a a known name brand and or put it on the outside of the bike put it somewhere where it can get cooled down more because heat is a factor with these things sure they have heat sinks on them exactly and that's why they're finned yeah exactly so that's it then we'll let's stop it right there okay cody Thanks, man. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for sending in your emails, your requests, your concerns about your motorcycles or your Tao Tao scooters. We really appreciate um, just the input that we've gotten from you guys. Matt, what is that email to send us in your concerns? Askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. And what do they need to include? You're making model on the subject and the description, just put in uh, your name, location, mileage, and then just be descriptive on the issue you're having. Pictures and videos are super helpful because then we can roll it in here and it helps yeah. everyone as well. Absolutely. If you guys feel um, up to it, donate to the uh, Rook and Motor Show Beer Fund. We appreciate you guys. Um, it helps us buy some beers and it uh, throws a couple pennies towards our families to help support them as well. So, Matt, I appreciate you and you, I'm thankful for you for being a part of this Rook and Motor Show as this is the Thanksgiving aftermath. So, I want to show my thank you to you um, for just being a part of it. Do you have anything to plug? nothing just my youtube channel my site check out what's cool. going on building this guy here yeah and a car back there and right on. i have some other stuff coming it's probably out by now by the time this goes out but i have a couple other little Ooh. things that i've been working on very I'll, cool i'll let you guys know and uh that's about it cool i'm about i'm about 70 percent done with the cb 900 f or the 80 through 83 n- CB750 carb clean. Okay. Workshop. I'm 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 getting really fired up about it. I'm it's it's, it's looking pretty good. Um awesome. So I have that coming out soon. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram uh at uh the motorcycle MD, feel free to follow me on there. I post pictures of me in the shop and what I'm going through right then and there. Um as well as the mailing list, obviously, um to join either Matt's or mine. So until then, nice outro, dude. Thanks, dude. All right. Later. See you. Thank you, everyone.